All right, welcome back students. I wanted to add a quick lecture to talk about when do you need a plugin? Because there's a lot that you can do with simple PyQGIS scripting. You can just write a Python script and run it within QGIS using the QGIS Python editor or the script runner plugin. And there's a lot that you can do, very powerful stuff. I talk about all that in my course on automating QGIS with Python. And so you certainly don't need a plugin to use Python with QGIS. But plugins have three main advantages. The first is the ease of distribution. Once you submit a plugin to the official QGIS repository, it's available to everyone. I think people are generally familiar with adding plugins from the QGIS repository and most people would be more comfortable with that than running a script. So even within your own organization, you can have your own repository that people can go use to load plugins. And they're probably going to be a little bit happier with that. But if you're just doing something for your own purposes and you're only going to use it once or twice or even a couple dozen times and it's just for your own use, you certainly don't need to go to the extra trouble of making it into a plugin. The good news, though, is that you, if you start with a PyQGIS script and you decide that you want to turn it into a plugin, you already have the logic and know exactly what you need to do, so it'll be pretty easy to transform that script into a plugin if you have to. Now, the second advantage would be if your application has a complex user interface. This would include things like menus or map tools, uh, multiple dialogue applications, dockable panels, etc., things like that, then you're probably going to want to implement it as a plugin. You could have multiple Python files and things like that. It's not technically impossible to do these kinds of things with a PyQGIS script, but it's a lot more straightforward with a plugin. And a third reason is that if you want to write a processing tool that interacts with the QGIS processing framework, you can do that with a plugin. And so in this case, your tool would be available in the processing toolbox. It would be able to use, be used by the QGIS graphical modeler. And you can see the results in the processing results interface. You can implement it to run in the background. And it will be able to be used like any other QGIS geoprocessing tool in any framework that knows how to use those, including being able to script the tool from within Python itself. And we'll see an example of this later on in the course. The disadvantage of a QGIS plugin is that they tend to be complex. You have to have a certainly a higher level of programming knowledge to write a plugin than you would to write a PyQGIS script. There's a lot of GIS analysts that are comfortable with Python and some simple scripting, but they're not professional programmers and may not be quite as comfortable with the things that you need to do to create an actual plugin. They're also, in my opinion, not particularly well documented. There's a lot of information out there on PyQGIS, and there's certainly some information on writing PyQGIS plugins, but it's very basic. And that's an issue that I'm trying to address with this course, is to provide some more documentation that's specific to QGIS plugins. So thanks for listening, and in the next lecture, we'll start writing our first plugin, I promise this time.